In this video, we're going to introduce you to the pattern folding problems, which comprise the final 15 problems on your PAT. So we'll be discussing what they are and how to approach them. Like our top front end series, we're gonna be specifically talking about a lot of different types of problems on this part of the PAT and how to analyze each type. But first, let's take a step back and talk about the rules of pattern folding problems in general. In this section, each problem will show you a paper pattern on the left side, which we call the map. And your job is to figure out which folded shape corresponds to this map, if it were folded into a three-dimensional object. The rule for folding is that the paper folds on either side of these black lines. In other words, there will be a crease or bend at each of these black lines in the folded object. In addition, each face on this pattern, which we call the map, will correspond to a face on the folded object. And you have to pick which folded object matches this outcome. It's important to mention that for maps with patterns or shading on the outside, the map will always fold into the page, such that the pattern will be visible from the outside. It's almost as if the map is folding away from the viewer, away from you. These questions can seem daunting. Like, do you have to picture exactly how the map would fold into a 3D object? But actually, you usually don't have to do this. You typically can just look at each of the answer choices and see which corresponds best to the map. And we're gonna give you an overview of how to do this for each type of pattern folding problem in more detail later on in this video. By studying problems on the DAT, we've realized that there are a few different distinct types of pattern folding problems. And you can figure out which type of problem you're dealing with pretty quickly. So let's go through these problem types. The first type of pattern folding problem includes a map with only blank faces and answer choices that all have the same general shape. In these types of problems, it's usually just the shapes of the individual faces that look different. So you'll want to just look closely at the faces within the map and make sure that they match on the map and the correct folded object. Notice that this is an example of a pattern folding problem that folds down like this. Though most of the objects in this problem type have faces going all the way around, you may occasionally have an object like this that folds in and then has no bottom face. For problems like this, where all the answer choices look pretty similar in shape, you wanna look closely at the shapes and proportions of the different faces just on their own or in relation to one another. For instance, you can eliminate choice A because it has multiple rectangular faces that are not present on the map. You can also eliminate choice B because these trapezoid faces that are bordering the central square are much too narrow. This causes the object to bend in here where it should bend out. While C on the other hand, has the outer set of trapezoids being far too narrow at the bottom and angling in there instead of angling out. Choice D, as we showed before, matches the sizes and proportions of all of the faces. And this is what we're looking for. These kinds of problems can actually be so simple as to involve just looking at the shape of one face on the map and comparing that to a corresponding face in each of the answer choices. So for ones like this, you wanna look for details in that main face. You could, for example, look at the angles of these short edges and eliminate choice B, where they're shown to be straight instead of at an angle. Or you could look at the relative length and width of the arrow base, especially when compared to the arrow's head, and eliminate choice C, which shows it being much too long and narrow, and these small edges, as a result, also being too long. Or we could look at the fact that this arrowhead is relatively straight, not curved or bent to the side, as in choice D. And then you can select choice A, which matches all of these angles and proportions. Remember that just like in other types of PAT problems, it can be easiest to look at the relative positions and proportions of different features rather than absolutes. So for instance, if you see a problem like this, where all the shapes are pretty similar, you'll wanna notice that on this main face, the object should be pretty similar in height as it is in width. This is more similar to what's seen in choice B and choice D and less similar to what's seen in choice A, which looks a bit too tall in comparison to its width, and choice C, which looks a bit too short compared to its width. You can also notice that these points and this curved section really don't extend that far out compared to the length of the object. That looks more like what's seen in choice B and less like what's seen in choice A and choice D. And we already said that choice C was too wide, so choice B is our best answer. The next type of problem also includes a map with blank faces, but where the answer choices all have very distinct different shapes. 
For these ones, you still wanna make sure and account for the faces that are actually on the map. And it still can be helpful to look at the most distinct faces first. For example, here we have two L-shaped faces, a shorter one on the right and a longer one on the left. We can only really see these faces being part of the shape in choice B. Notice there is a small L shape on the top and a larger L shape on the bottom. These faces are not really present in the other choices. In A, there's sort of an L shape that wraps around to the back, but it's definitely missing this tall L shape. C doesn't have any L shaped faces. And D only has one because its base is rectangular. So B has got to be correct. Notice that B also shows the bottom of the smaller L shape connected to this ramped face. The slanted edges on these faces suggest that this face must sit on a ramp. For these types of problems, you may also need to look at the number of each type of face that's shown on the map. Notice in this problem, choice A would have two of these bigger trapezoidal faces, two of these smaller trapezoidal faces, and four of these triangular faces, with two being shorter. B, on the other hand, has four big trapezoids and four small trapezoids. No triangular faces, and then two square faces. Choice C has only triangular faces, and choice D shows an asymmetrical object that likely doesn't include a lot of pairs of identical faces, and it has two trapezoidal faces that meet at this very narrow edge at the front. And that just doesn't really match what we see in the map. So. A is correct. You may also need to look more closely at the position of faces in relation to one another. So for instance, the map shows this little region that should fold into a sort of rooftop shape with triangular sides and rectangular tops. Shapes like this are only present in choice B and choice D. Choice A has a little roof, but it has the wrong shape. Notice that it consists of these trapezoidal faces and equilateral triangles. In choice B, the little roof section is shown sitting off towards the end of these long rectangular faces. And choice D shows it sitting in the middle. The map shows that this rectangular face of the roof connects to the middle of this long rectangular face. And that only matches choice D. So D is the answer. This brings us to another kind of pattern folding problem which instead of showing maps with blank faces, will show you maps with partially or fully shaded faces, or else some other pattern on the faces. Often these maps will include regular prisms, like this cube, for example, with half shaded faces, or this cube with symbols on the faces, or triangular prisms, or even hexagonal or pentagonal prisms, and even the occasional cylinder. Sometimes you can still eliminate answer choices just based on the wrong shapes of faces. So like for this one, we can go ahead and eliminate choice A right away, since it shows a hexagon instead of a pentagon. But oftentimes you'll have to pay attention to the orientation of the shaded or patterned faces themselves, which other faces they border, and how their patterns are oriented in relation to those other faces. So for instance, you'll wanna notice these two half shaded rectangular faces that are separated by one blank face on this side and two blank faces on this side. Notice that for both of these patterned faces, the blank side of the rectangles borders this shaded pentagon. And the shaded side of the rectangular faces borders the blank pentagon. So just according to this fact alone, we can eliminate choice B and choice C because each of them show a blank half bordering the blank pentagon. But choice D looks about right, showing both blank halves bordering the shaded pentagon. For cubes, like this, you'll wanna make sure you know which faces are bordering each other and how they're oriented, paying special attention to the pattern sides here. We can see that the circles should sit on opposite sides of the cube from one another. So since that's the case, they wouldn't ever be visible from the same perspective like they are in choice C. The triangle, on the other hand, borders an O on each side and a blank face on its other two sides. So this view where you see two blank faces and no circles is impossible. And for these ones with symbols, you'll also wanna pay attention to the orientation of those symbols. Notice that the triangle itself should point towards a blank face and not towards one of the circles. So we can actually eliminate choice A. Choice B correctly shows the triangle pointing towards a blank face 
and bordering a face with a circle on its other edge. So that's our correct answer. If you're still a little confused about cubes and how all these faces connect, we will be covering cubes and other regular prisms much more in depth in a later video. So don't panic. The fourth and final type of pattern folding problem includes shaded patterns on the maps that form more random or complex shapes compared to the regular geometric shapes. These could include very symmetrical but pretty complex shapes like this, simple but kind of randomly shaped objects like this, or just weird things like this tent object, or this shoe-like object with a window pattern on it. For these ones, you'll want to again focus on the orientation of faces and their patterns. But perhaps more than with the standard prisms, you'll also want to focus on the overall shape analysis and the face shapes as well to see if that can help you eliminate answer choices. For example, for this one, you can see right away that these side shapes should bend in at the middle, forming a sort of hourglass shape. So that helps us eliminate choice A and choice C immediately because they show the whole object bending out. So then we only have to compare B and D. Let's start by looking at choice D. Choice D shows this part of the map because it has a large shaded trapezoid bordered by two thin blank trapezoidal faces. The other side of D, however, shows two thin shaded faces in the middle. And according to the map, those two faces sit on the opposite side of the object. So there's no way that they could be bordering the other faces shown in choice D. Choice B shows this part of the map because it has a shaded trapezoidal face and one thin shaded face. And it should, in fact, sit to the left of this side that has two thin shaded faces when the white square is at the top. It can be helpful to look at this corner and see that this side of the object should sit on the left edge and this side of the object should attach to the right edge when the blank square face is oriented towards the top. For this one, you're dealing with a very simple pattern with a shaded or blank teardrop shape on either side. You'll wanna make sure that the correct answer correctly shows that these two shaded rectangles form around this part of the teardrop with one blank rectangle wrapping around the curved part. This is correct in all the answer choices except for choice A, where you see two blank rectangular faces and choice C, where there is a shaded rectangle on the curved part. So after eliminating those, you have to look more closely at the shape of the teardrop itself. In choice D, it looks like the curved part takes up too much of the object. See how high these two points sit? Choice B matches their position much better. So that must be our answer. All right, we've gone through the basic rules of pattern folding problems and how the different types of problems look. To summarize the basic rules, remember that each face on the map will correspond to a face on the folded object. And accordingly, there will be a crease or bend at each solid black line. For maps with shading or patterns, it is important to remember that the maps fold into the page, such that the pattern will be visible from the outside of the object. For all of the problem types, it's not necessary to become overwhelmed trying to visualize exactly how the object will fold. Always look at the answer choices and try to compare them strategically to the real map. For blank face maps, when answer choices have all the same general shape, make sure that the shapes of the faces on the correct choice match the shapes of the faces on the map. If you're looking at one main distinctly shaped face, make sure all the proportions and angles are correct and try to look at the relative proportions and positions instead of absolutes. When answer choices differ in their overall shape, you want to make sure that you can account for all the general faces in the map. It's easiest to look for the most characteristic or distinctly shaped faces, like this. You also may have to make sure that the correct number of certain faces are present, such as with these trapezoids or these triangular faces here and you may have to look at the placement or position of faces in relation to one another. For maps with patterns or symbols on regular prisms, you can sometimes still eliminate answer choices based on an overall shape mismatch, so look for those. But you'll have to pay closer attention 
to which faces connect to one another, like this blank rectangular face separating the two half-shaded faces, or these faces with symbols falling into a straight line. You also want to pay attention to the orientation of shaded patterns and symbols in relation to other faces on the object. For instance, the fact that these shaded halves must border the blank pentagon, or the fact that this triangle must point at a blank face. Lastly, for patterns and symbols on more complex objects, you want to pay attention to a combination of this. For instance, you can look at the overall shape of an object and its faces. This includes the shapes and proportions of individual faces. And as with regular prisms, you also want to pay attention to which faces connect to one another and the orientation of the resulting patterns. Okay, this was a lot, but we will be breaking down each of these problem types in future videos. Be sure to practice with all of our pattern folding problems on our website, as this will give you a lot of good practice in all of these different types of problems and really run the gamut of what you'll see on your actual DAT. Be sure to carefully study the correct answer analysis and why wrong answers do not match the map given. Good luck studying. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.